the last thing I want to talk about that affects both latency and bandwidth is how you do switching on your network. The traditional phone network worked using circuit switching, that when you connect two points, you make a reservation. So Napoleon would reserve the path from Paris to Toulon, and no one else could use any of the links along that path until he was done. And if he wanted to send a message from Nantes to Toulon, you'd have to wait until Napoleon's message was done. So this is not using your resources that efficiently. Does this affect bandwidth or latency or both? So if you're Napoleon and you always get your reservation first, it's not affecting you too much. But if you're looking at the network as a whole, well, the average latency is going to go up if you are having to wait until someone else finished before you can start getting your message. And the total bandwidth is also going to go down because you're wasting a lot of resources. The solution to that is, is packet switching, which is instead of reserving a whole path, you use one link at a time. Both those links can be used at once. Now we have contention. Only one can use that link at a time. Say the red one goes through first. The next step, now the orange one can use that link, and the red one can use this link. So we're using our resources more effectively since we're using many resources at once. Total bandwidth is going to increase over circuit switching. What's the downside to packet switching? Do we give anything up for this? OK, good. It does make the switching more complicated. There's more work for each router to do to figure out what to do next. Is there any other problem with it? Yes. Good. Yeah, why is that? Why is it not good for real time? Good. Yeah, you don't have any guarantee. Right? When you make a phone call on the old network, this is not true for phone calls today that are basically using packet switching on the internet. But in the old phone network, you might have got this sent. You try to call, especially overseas calls, you would be told there's no circuits available. Try again later. But once you got your call, you had reliable service the, the whole time. When you do a call on the internet or you Skype, you can get jitter because some of your packets aren't getting through on time and you don't have any reservation to guarantee they will. An internetwork is just a connection of multiple networks that are connected together. And this is internetwork with a lowercase i. But anytime we're connecting networks where different networks have different protocols, different routing systems, once we connect them, we have an internetwork. And this goes back a long time too. The first international one, at least, was connecting Denmark and Sweden. And I think the border is right here. Back in 1800, they decided to connect their two telegraph networks. They had different protocols, different countries, lots of differences, but they figured a way to connect them. This was an internet. The reason they did this is because they were both afraid of England attacking them. And it worked well technically. The next year, England did attack Denmark. And Denmark sent a message successfully to Sweden. Sweden decided they'd really rather not get into a war with England at the time and disconnected the network. So it only lasted about a year, but it worked very well technically. The modern internet is a lot fuzzier to say when that started and all the things that went into it. And lots of people claim to be the inventors of the internet. Vint Cerf deserves a lot of the credit, and he was here a few years ago. Al Gore got a lot of flack for talking about being the inventor of the internet, even though he didn't quite word it like that. But in terms of the government support for it, he does deserve quite a bit of credit. A lot of the technical ideas, like packet switching, go back long before people think of it as the internet. Back in 1969, the internet, what we think of it today, started as the first packets being sent from UCLA to Stanford. They started to type log in to connect a computer, and it crashed on the G. But they got three letters through successfully. How impressive is this compared to the other kinds of communication events that were going on earlier that year? This is a history question. Yeah, so a few months before that, they were sending back live video from the moon. So the net was pretty far behind. This is not me in the picture. This is my big sister. I was not born yet. She was uh, about two months old, enjoying the moon landing in 1969. <coughs> you can see the high quality graphics. We're on the moon. So the internet had a long way to go to catch up to that, but was a few months behind. This is the internet today. The average monthly consumption in North America is about 45 gigabytes. How much of that is web traffic? Is HTTP? Do you think more than half or less than half? Less than half? OK, good. Yeah, less than 10% of it is web traffic. Netflix, by far the biggest source of traffic. SSL is getting up there. 2.5% is secure web traffic. You can read their support. It's, it's quite interesting. I have a link to it in the notes about network usage in different parts of the world and projections of how much there will be. I will wrap up there. I'll leave this quote. This is from Tim Berners-Lee, Answers to Young People, which I think is quite a nice quote. <laughs>